Kingdom Rush is back. The past couple of months have been a standstill for the series, and that's understandable. Even though Ironhide Games is still hard at work as a studio, the community is kind of dead. The Kingdom Rush series is more than 10 years old now. The last tower defense game, Vengeance, came out in 2018. Most of what you can do with these games has been done already. So it seems like the series is destined to fade away into obscurity. But destiny can be changed. This is Kingdom Rush Revengeance. Since September 2020, some of the most passionate members of the community have been working on a massive mod for Kingdom Rush Vengeance. Many criticisms have been thrown at Vengeance for deviating from the series in ways that aren't as enjoyable as the earlier games. While there's nothing wrong with experimenting, many of the differences between Vengeance and the other games are hard to justify. Wave design has been reduced to having very few enemies on screen and having incredibly short intervals between waves, making artillery feel useless and practically removing the self-control difficulty that Calling Waves early granted the player. Difficulty overall seemed far easier this time around, with fewer enemies leading to tower placements not seeming to matter as much. Balance seemed to take a turn for the worse, with many abilities like the Crow being way too weak to be worth upgrading. Many of the mechanical features of Vengeance were also objectively worse than in the previous games, due to the change in engine. As a result, lots of enemies are nonsensically immune to effects that should definitely work on them. Abilities are wasted if you move a hero or other unit at any point during their animation. In the previous games, you could move a hero to interrupt their skills without triggering the cooldown for the ability, but in Vengeance, it instantly starts the cooldown on the very first frame of the skill's usage. So, Hero Micro became much more annoying in Vengeance. Tower abilities also reset their cooldown the moment you upgraded them, and don't even get me started on how melee engagement is way worse on this engine as well. There are plenty of criticisms to be levied at Vengeance. Even Frontiers and Origins have their fair share of critics, though not to the same extent as Vengeance. While the other games are shinier at first glance, none of them could strike the same balance in tower design, enemy resistances, or wave composition that the first game managed to do. That's where Kingdom Rush Revengeance comes in. Whether or not you have the same issues with any of the past games, this mod is refined to the point that that kind of nitpicking just isn't possible. Coming from some of the most passionate members of the community, this mod has been in the works for over a year and a half. And during that time, the creators have done their best to make Revengeance more in line with the quality of the previous games, the quality that made people fans in the first place. There are so many changes that Revengeance brings to the game. First, many of the names and descriptions have been altered to contribute to the tone of the game, as well as to make more sense in English. Ironhide hasn't always had the best English localization. Just look at the description for City of Rivers. We are fighting forces that I want to believe that they shouldn't be what I think they are. <laughs> Towers have been vastly improved overall as well. For one, they don't all have about the same range as each other, and very low range at that. Now there is more variety in their stats, so that each tower means a lot more. And of course, so many of the gripes in the past have been remedied now. The Shadow Archer's Crow no longer deals 1 and then 2 damage. Now it deals 6 and then 12 true damage, making it actually worth something now. The Deep Devil's Reef Net no longer makes enemies trapped inside invincible, so this upgrade actually helps now. Not to mention, the Infernal Mage's Teleport now actually moves enemies by a significant distance. Rocket Rider Mines are actually good now. Wicked Sisters can't accidentally waste their abilities when you move them anymore. Burning Coals now has a large enough AoE to actually hit enemies. The Elite Harass's Fury of the Twilight skill is no longer RNG, and it doesn't make them take longer to respawn like it did in the original game. There are many other quality of life changes, but I want to focus on how tower dynamics have been improved. One problem with the towers in the original Vengeance was that several of them were interchangeable. It didn't make that much of a difference to get the Infernal Mage versus the Orc Shaman. Towers didn't feel as impactful as they used to, and without clear roles to serve, it rarely ever felt good picking a loadout and bringing it into battle. Changes have been made to try to remedy this in Revengeance. Orcs are more balanced around having high total HP, allowing them to tank magic and true damage more effectively than Dark Knights, who are more tuned towards countering physical attacks. Gobbler ranks actually serve their role as a balanced 2-in-1 archer-artillery hybrid, without making the other archers or artillery towers seem objectively better or worse. 
bone flingers are not overwhelmingly OP anymore, so there is an incentive to use other archers. The mausoleum is no longer a braindead obvious choice for the best mage tower, as possession is no longer OP, and its main attack serves as more of a cheap magic option, making it more of a skill-based utility mage compared to the straightforward, heavy-hitting other mages. The Orc Shaman is now a fully focused AoE mage, dealing area damage on its base attack by default and having rebalanced abilities that are actually worth upgrading. Blazing Gems are no longer instant win buttons, at least not against bosses. They are still the best DPS options, but the role isn't so powerful that it bypasses the need for anything else. You really do have to take into account every enemy when considering your strategy. And that takes me to the enemies in waves. No longer do waves slowly trickle out enemies one by one. You actually face proper armies in this mod, and each enemy actually matters now. Health, damage, and lives taken are increased across the board to make the game properly challenging. Armor and magic resistance has been properly applied, modified, or revoked to make each damage type mean something more. Waves now have significant intervals between each other, so that levels don't just feel like a singular dragged out wave. The volume of each individual wave is significant enough that calling waves early can very quickly add up. All of this is to make the player seriously strategize, learn the tools at their disposal, and make more meaningful decisions. Individual enemies have a lot of reworks too. In particular, the endgame stages in Lineria have a ton of special surprises that I don't want to spoil here. Instead, I want to talk about how the heroes have been reworked. In the original game, the heroes were all over the map in terms of how useful they were, but in Revengeance, the heroes now serve unique roles with their very own playstyles. If you play to that hero's strengths, they have a role to play in any level, meaning that you should be able to beat the game with any of them. Finally, spells and upgrades have been retooled for a vastly better experience. Reinforcements have a 10 second cooldown, so you can have two on the battlefield at all times. Additionally, there is actually a reason to pick demon guards instead of tridents. They have a longer duration, so you can have three demon guards at a time if you place them fast enough versus two maximum tridents. The RNG of the pit lord has been removed, so you get a permanent third reinforcement, making the game feel less luck based. Soul impact was so weak in the first vengeance that some fans called it soul tickle. In revengeance, that impact is felt. Not only does the spell do more damage, but the slow effect actually lasts for longer than the blink of an eye, and slows by a more significant percentage. The tower and hero upgrades in the tree make more of a difference now, compared to the really weak upgrades they used to provide. I could recite the entire changelog if I wanted to, but that would spoil the fun of getting to experience this game for yourself. You need to own Kingdom Rush Vengeance on Steam, or presumably, on good old games. This mod is not a means of bypassing the original purchase of the game. That is illegal and would never be endorsed by the community or Ironhide. You have to buy the game on PC in some way. If you play it on mobile, sorry, but this is just another L for the mobile fanbase. Just when you thought that all the platforms could finally be equal after the old iOS version was updated to match Steam and Android, now there's another incentive to stick to just Steam. Honestly, if there's one piece of advice I could tell anyone who's getting into the series, it would be to play on Steam. This has been a long time coming. I'm beyond excited to see this mod become a part of the Kingdom Rush community. With the Steam release of Legends on its way, now is a great time to be a Kingdom Rush fan. Unless you're a mobile player.